Okay, I hope it's going to be a little bit less formal from now on. Uh, and um, let's uh, go to next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, um, um, yeah. So, what what is in it for you? And who are decision makers? Uh, we have decision makers in my title. Decision makers are all of us because we make decisions all day long. Uh, we're doing it every day. And then um, what's great about uh, AI, um, in many uh, respects, AI can um, actually significantly improve our decision making. So I'm going to cover some uh, actionable insights, AI actionable insights in this presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so you can see that uh, I put in subtitle and here uh, on agenda, AI is um, X, Y years old. Um, this is one of the questions and I'm going to ask you questions uh, along my presentation for those who stick around and are watching it live. You're going to get uh, some presents. If you answer those questions correctly and you're one of the first three to answer each specific questions correctly. Um, I, when I was young, uh, I learned some importance of traditions and I continue to uh, try to follow them. Um, and um, one of the traditionalists and one of the scholars of Torah, Old Testament, actually summarized uh, uh, Old Testament in one sentence. Uh, what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. Which is in plain English saying, uh, if um, you treat other people the way you want to be treated by them. So from my young age, I was, I was liking presents. So when we get our first startup going in 2002, we start giving uh, our team uh, mates uh, presents. So we're going to continue that tradition here too. So along the presentation, you're going to see some questions. You, I'm not going to read what you have on slides. Uh, if you see questions and you have, you think uh, you can give correct answer, please do that. We go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the first question. So all questions which I'd like you to answer, uh, it's a subset of all questions I ask in my slide uh, deck, okay? This is the first question is, if you know what is Amaralo, please, Type it in your uh, chat. By some miracle, gonna uh, filter out uh, first three correct um, answers, and uh, we're gonna connect with you afterwards. And you, irrespective of whether you are data art um, team member or not, um, you're gonna get uh, some present. Um, so one of my friends told that this person uh, looks like I do. I. Um, uh, completely disagree with that assessment, but the point of this slide is that uh, at some point it was called applied stat or stat, at some point it was called machine learning. Nowadays, when you want to have uh, a larger audience, you, you call it AI. Next slide, please. So AI is 65. Again, that was not the question I wanted you to answer. The first question was about Amara law. Uh, AI 65 is too easy. So we're going to talk uh, in this first section of this presentation, we're going to talk about AI, how to define it, about AI births and founders, behind it an elephant in the room. Next slide, please. Um, I, I think we can skip next two slides because uh, Marcus did a um, uh, great job of describing me. So let's drop this next slide too. And this one as well, yeah. So let's um, just pause for a few seconds, for seconds, right? So 10 years ago, none of this uh, existed. None of these companies of fantastic apps existed. So AI is really tra uh, transformational these days. This is very important to um, kind of have in mind when we talk about AI. Uh, of course, uh, critics would say, yeah, but some of the companies will not uh, going to be around the next 10 years. But for now, we use uh, many of some of those uh, fantastic companies and applications. Next one. OK, so um, uh, there are different estimates how successful or uh, not successful AI is in current business environment. I like Gartner. And uh, one of the estimates they made that uh, 
85% of AI projects usually fail uh, in today's AI. Uh, we had uh, previously interesting, uh, fascinating actually discussion with uh, travel and AI experts uh, that was um, think tank moderated by Greg. And uh, in that discussion, we talked about this uh, enormous failure rate of AI. And one of the uh, kind of two cents I added to this discussion is that you need to align your decision makers, execs, key stakeholders, and your own understanding uh, along the lines of correct expectations with uh, AI success rate. So on average, uh, there would be um, less successes that you would like to. Another tip is just general one about this fantastic book by another Gartner brilliant mind, Tina Nuna. And uh, um, we at Dead Art, we uh, recently introduced Mia Dama, which is our new TM, uh, along the same lines. And uh, I will comment on it in the second part of this presentation. Thank you. Next one. Okay, so the question is uh, when uh, AI uh, was born. Um, and where AI was born, okay? Um, so, but you see it's not in bold italic blue, so you're not gonna get, get any uh, presence, but there's a uh, next question coming. Next slide, please. Yeah, I need to comment that this uh, uh, great drawings were not done by me. I'm completely unable to, uh, unable to do any of this but um, done by my wife, Natalie. And uh, uh, who were uh, uh, AI parents? And it's completely subjective way, but if you're an AI expert, you can actually hopefully uh, um, guess uh, correctly who are those three people which some consider um, parents of AI. If you have any clue about any of those three people, uh, send it in your chat. And first three was correct answers, gonna get a presence. Next slide, please. Uh, that's the one um, which is truly called um, AI uh, father. His name is John McCarthy. And uh, in uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so we skipped one slide, unfortunately. So in let's go back to, to John. Uh, um, John Previous slide, yeah. So um, in 1955, so 50, 65 years uh, ago, he and three other people proposed uh, having a famous Dartmouth uh, workshop on AI. In 1955, he um, came up with word uh, artificial intelligence. So there was one person who came up with these two words. And uh, basically, he defined it as uh, thinking machines. And uh, um, he had three conspirators, Rockefeller Foundation. This is last presentation of a very busy half day of great presenting. So I'd like to be that one to be lighter. Uh, so um, they applied for thirteen and a half thousand dollars to Rockefeller Foundation here in New York, and the Rockefeller Foundation gave seven thousand for to run this uh, workshop, which became birthplace of AI. Uh, this is considered one of the best uh, ROIs in human history. So uh, next slide gonna tell us about my favorite, next slide, my favorite definition of AI done by Paul uh, Daugherty, who is the Chief Innovation and Technology Officer of Accenture, and Jim Wilson, who is another brilliant mind from Accenture. Um, and uh, Artificial intelligence, I, I kind of collect definitions of them. Now I have more than 20. This one I think is, um, is, is one of the most actionable ones. I, it's my favorite. So AI is a set of technologies we can, we can learn, act, sense, and think. Compared to us uh, humans who have, diff who have different abilities, more along the lines of crack, we can comprehend uh, reason, extrapolate, and generalize across many different domains of knowledge. Okay, AI is more like delta, uh, delta function, uh, um, much, much better in much narrower, more defined areas um, of um, knowledge, uh, which is actually changing as we speak. Next slide, please. Let's talk about difference between AI and HI, uh, artificial human intelligence. 
And uh, again, you're not going to get gifts to answer the question. Next slide, please. What is alpha uh, uh, go? Uh, just for fun of it, who do you think is alpha go representing? The left person or right person? And um, this was actually uh, a recent, uh, you know, a major event between AI and humans where um, AI uh, program AlphaGo won to World Championship in Go. Um, the, uh, that happened in Seoul a couple of years ago. It was a major achievement of AI by AlphaGo, which is part of Google um, Alphabet Company. Next slide, please. So difference, the differences between HI and AI. Uh, again, usually AI is more um, you know, keen to learn from specific inputs of observed behavior like savant function or delta function. And uh, um, even uh, very powerful AlphaGo originally, now they, they change it. Uh, they put under the same umbrella. Um, interesting um, uh, algorithms, but originally was able to play Go, but not able to play, say, for example, tic-tac-toe. Yeah? And of course, it doesn't have any feelings and, and or compassion, which is rather sad. Uh, uh, there is potential possible future bridge between AI and HI, uh, which is called artificial gel intelligence. Next slide. At some point, um, I was asked earlier this year, what would be eight near future waves of AI? Um, and I have put them on this uh, small slide deck. Um, and I'd like to comment on very interesting um, prediction made, um, I would say, uh, um, a, year and a year and a half ago uh, by uh, Salesforce, one of, one of our partner organizations that in year and a half uh, from that prediction date, which is basically now, there would be 143% uh, growth um, of use of AI in service companies, which they are is one of service and consultancy companies. Um, I wonder how we came up with that specific um, um, prediction, 143% growth. Um, next one. Uh, that's the third question. Uh, um, it would be great, Marcus, if you or somebody from our miracle workers behind the scene uh, tell, tell if we get people answering any of the questions and uh, some may be answering correctly. Uh, but that's the third question I'd like you to, to, to answer. So look at this uh, photos, please. And uh, answer, uh, there will be three uh, uh, pictures of exoskeletons, okay? Classic exoskeletons. Which of those three um, would be, you think, powered by AI? This is the first picture. Next slide. This is second picture. This is being powered by AI. Next one is third picture. This is my favorite. So this is October 1st in Munich. And uh, this young lady is uh, serving beer in large amounts. So she has to have some kind of support, mechanical support, or maybe artificial intelligence support. So which of those three um, uh, exoskeletons is powered by AI? If you think you know the answer, just guess it. Who knows, maybe you're going to be correct. Next slide, please. Um, about making predictions or making guesses in 2003, I was um, um, asked by Department of Energy, uh, what is my dream with regard to AI? So I call it Dream of Eugene, also DOE. Uh, and that's image from movie Minority Report. For those who saw this movie, I hope you enjoyed it, but for those who didn't, and the guy in front is, is Tom Cruise. Um, I highly recommend this movie, which was done long ago, but it's still, I think, a very interesting one. So basically, they try to prevent crime. This is uh, Crime Department, Preven Department of Crime Prevention, okay? And um, he's uh, standing in front of a nice uh, uh, wall and basically moving different data uh, sources, different objects, and then generating on the fly predictions about future crime. Uh, so in 2003, I remember I made prediction that I would be absolutely uh, happy if we're gonna have something like that, this kind of device um, done 
in uh, 15 years or so from that time. And, uh, and then really great if we will do it in 10 years. And I remember a participant of this uh, think tank were pretty skeptical about it. I myself was not sure if this would make sense. But um, in less than three years, such uh, device already appeared on the market. Okay? And at some point, uh, at the very beginning, this company was bought by Microsoft. So we got it. Uh, I used to live in Seattle, not at Microsoft working, but we work in healthcare, and we got that device in less uh, than five years. Okay? That's kind of interesting about predictions. It's really tough to predict them, especially if we're talking about future events, right? Next one. Um, alternative definition of OI, ML, uh, that's an uh, old um, uh, kind of ad from 50s about coffee. And uh, that's, uh, I think, also hopefully on the softer side, uh, uh, describing what we do in these days in AI and ML. Next slide. Okay, these are the last two questions for those who are still around. Um, there is elephant in the room every time, or almost every time, we're talking about AI. This happens with me, uh, it's happened with my friends, uh, my colleagues. People always ask about this major, major question uh, related to AI. What is that question? That's a question number four. And question number five, who do you think is uh, illustrated on, on this um, uh, drawing? Okay, who is sitting on this chair? And again, it was done by my wife, okay? Cool, I think you've got enough clues. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, elephant in the room is the question which many people ask about um, influence uh, of AI and jobs. And there are many people, many companies making those predictions. And uh, um, uh, we, uh, uh, I'd like to put a couple, you know, uh, takes on it. One of them is Kai Fu Li. Uh, I know it's ridiculous to ask who is Kai Fu Li because uh, of that I'm not asking this um, question. But if you don't know who is him, um, you better do some searches. He's brilliant mind genius who um, done a lot for AI uh, in many different circumstances. Uh, and he uh, last year predicted that uh, roughly 40% of global jobs are going to be replaced by AI very tough prediction and we have some uh, indications of uh, ai and clouds uh, technologies uh, kind of influence in current businesses brick and mortar for example businesses like in second point here and um, another uh, very interesting prediction by pwc uh, on the uh, future jobs uh, in developed countries uh, uh, from another side next slide please you have um, the same PWC prediction or from um, like key decision makers, CEOs, and twice of them are more optimistic about AI influencing uh, jobs versus those who are pessimistic. Um, I, I teach AI business innovation course at NYU, so my students pushed me uh, and, and did uh, demand that I'm going to make my prediction about that. And um, I decided to do it, so I'm going to share my prediction. And you know how successful I am with my predictions based on, for example, a previous example I told you, Department of Energy, I think 10 to 2003. So here is my prediction. I think that AI is going to significantly reduce old routine single skill jobs and create more new hybrid double skill jobs. So I call those people with double skills job unicorns. Um, I know it's not classic definition of unicorn, and I'm bad that you know people in this audience. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, true unicorns, or some of them going to become unicorns. So, um, uh, like Wayne Gretzky uh, taught us, right? It's important not to be where pack is, but it's important to be where you know um, pack's going to be in future, right? So uh, that's something to consider. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, I need to do some introduction of our new TM process called Mia Dama. So I'm not going to ask you what is Mia in some languages, uh, because I'm sure that we have native language speakers of those languages. But we're going to cover uh, a little bit about data art, uh, 
about our new AI slash ML center of excellence and what is Miyadama. Next slide, please. So Data Act is Global Technology and Dama Consultancy, and uh, we help our clients through scalable software solutions. Let's go to the next slide. These are a few statistics about uh, our uh, place, and uh, I'm not sure you can see anything on the map, but I know that we have more locations that uh, represent on this map. I know this couple which are not on this map. I saw it in different scales, so easy for me to, to make this claim. But on the left side, you see some important statistics about our size and uh, some of important statistics about our expertise, R&D, um, client's return. Um, and let's go to the next slide. Sample of our clients, uh, primarily from financial industry. Um, uh, but this is a representative sample. We have clients which are new and we have clients who are over 10 years old. Next one. Uh, a couple of words about our center of excellence. Uh, so uh, AI ML center of excellence, we do those things obviously and more. Um, we are 50 plus uh, strong uh, team. We actually uh, just um, started uh, mid July um, it was based on previous um, ML center of competency, but we restructured it completely. Uh, next slide, please. And um, we have three people who are um, two people together with me, my partners uh, in this crime. Uh, one is Damova, who is head of our center, and uh, my other partner, Yuri Gubin, who is, uh, as me, co director. Yuri is um, um, also just brilliant mind in our place and he's our chief innovation officer. A structure of this center is kind of um, um, its metric structure. So on the top uh, verticals, we have our practices. We have digital transformation, which includes uh, and the retail is getting uh, born out of this practice next year. Uh, we have um, agri uh, culture, we have ad tech, we have auto. Then we have also other practices, finance, healthcare, and life sciences, media, travel. And then on the left side, uh, horizontals, we have competencies like ML, um, mobile, IoT, ML Ops. This is a very new one. I'm going to talk about that if we have time at the very end. And this is surrounded by our experts, our colleagues who are helping us with uh, marketing, working uh, uh, client uh, faced uh, work. So this is how we structure our center. Uh, next slide, please. Now about Mia Dama. Uh, um, Mia in the, some of the languages is my, and here it, it meant management innovation and action for and Dama is data, AI, ML, and analytics. We TM this, um, and this is our uh, first uh, actually uh, public, actually online, Second, because there was earlier today presentation of Mia Dama to one of our clients. I learned it from Vlad Smirnik, who is one of the uh, minds behind it. So let's go to the next slide, please. So, um, you know, uh, Dama is basically our process. And here, I'm not going to again read what, what is, you see here. You're going to get this um, slide deck. Uh, without any problem after the presentation. But the point is here that we are going from business, right, to this research and prototyping um, exercise in order to get the implementation plan after this DAMA uh, three-step procedure, okay? Next slide. Then, next slide, uh -huh. And then after this implementation plan and prototyping is done, then we get into implementation standard development you know, two-step procedure, implementation and maintenance, and again, finishing up with business objectives. So, which allows us, let's go to the next slide. This allows us to have kind of closure of this circle. Um, that would be bad if we're gonna have to re, uh, uh, um, reload computer, thank you. So, so we're gonna start with Dharma, we're gonna go into implementation, we're gonna go to maintenance, and then we have this iterative cycle if we need to do improvements, enhancements, uh, innovations, right? So this is our Dama, Mia Dama process. Next slide, please. 
and then you can actualize it for uh, different clients. And this, let's assume client is GAM, and that's basically what we've done with our uh, client, which we're gonna call GAM. Uh, again, you're gonna see this um, uh, graph, uh, uh, you know, if you want, you can get it after the presentation. But it basically describes business use cases, you know, GAM stakeholders, um, then we need to do assessment uh, uh, of demo um, management maturity, um, IT landscape, uh, specific consumer of demo, and what kind of um, demo assets this specific client uh, has. That's done for, um, like, typically for our clients. Next one. Uh, I'm challenged with, uh, you know, um, designing, so I'm really impressed when somebody can do something like that, which is actually based on, in this specific case, not an AWS, but on Azure platform. It's um, our custom solution based on uh, Power BI. And we do this kind of uh, exact dashboards. Uh, next slide, please. Um, for our clients, uh, that's a different presentation, which is very important, especially when you have non-experts decision makers making decisions, you need to make it very actionable. Next slide, please. Um, just to show a variety of things. Next slide, please. Uh, why I personally like uh, black background, um, uh, we can do it different ways. Let's do the next slide. Um, uh, yeah, you can do it in white as well. Again, I'm trying to make it a bit softer after half day of um, very intense presentations by our brilliant speakers and uh, uh, experts in think tanks. Next slide, please. And this is my favorite, of course. Um, uh, we have a lot of things on this packed on this dashboard, including one of the favorite uh, years. Next slide. Okay, and usually when we work with clients, um, this is how we, we deal in specific questions and we're trying to understand uh, client needs much better. We're trying to get deeper in the business side and objectives and who are key stakeholders and what approximate timeline you have in mind and key deliverables. Okay, next one. This is how our center is working. And if you want to try Dama, Mia Dama, you're going to have this contacts uh, handy. Next slide. Um, okay, so let me give you one specific example of uh, our current work. And uh, I introduced this demo, which we call, which is uh, Kaggle, um, actually a competition on home credit default risk. And we talk about our superb A, a plus team, uh, what was our task, and uh, gonna give you a short overview of demo. And uh, I want to ask um, Marcus uh, and the brilliant people behind the scene to let me know 15 minutes before I should uh, uh, kind of end presentation, because people, I would, Thing would be tired. We don't want to go overboard. Okay. So next slide, please. Uh -huh. um... I, I would like to I would like to say something, Gene, uh, just specifically for the yes. people that have been um, answering the yeah. questions, and uh, just to politely ask them to include their emails because some of them, of course, have been the right answers. Of course, some of them are not, but <laughs> we want to be able to contact them afterwards to give them their uh, gifts, as you have promised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, that was my fault, um, my bad. That please, if you send um, uh, answers, please identify yourself. Um, I don't think AI is able to do it without knowing your email to do it on the spot. I, I'm not sure about that. So this is our A plus team. I'm not unfortunately gonna be able to talk about all of these people, but I'd like you to know that um, these amazing people, and if you are, you know, data art person. Um, uh, let's switch to, sorry, let's switch back to uh, slide deck if possible. Yeah, okay, cool, thank you. So uh, if you are within, if you want to, to, to try yourself in the AI, ML um, kind of area of expertise, connect with those people, uh, connect with other people mentioned in uh, previous slides, um, don't be shy. Uh, and uh, um, for those who are not data arts, you know, if you want to work with us, you're going to be working with these brilliant people. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is uh, this came actually from one of our clients. 
uh, one of the major like worldwide financial institution, trillion plus dollar institution, which asked us to do um, kind of to compare our um, muscles, uh, ML muscles against Kaggle competition on home credit default risk, uh, which is basically if you can predict um, uh, properly if applicant will be repaying the loan, right? Next slide, please. Uh, this is use case of Kaggle. Uh, this is famous uh, um, use case. It happened uh, a couple years ago, um, and um, usually uh, in the majority of those cases, Kaggle competitions, um, uh, Kaggle does it uh, 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 with regard to major statistics, uh, uh, which is called AUK area under uh, curve uh, under rock curve, which is basically accuracy. Um, accuracy uh, um, metrics. Next slide, please. Um, why are you doing this? Obviously, in trying to minimize the risk, why it's matter for our um, financial client uh, to minimize risk and other important, um, you know, questions on this slide, which are kind of more or less obvious. Next slide. Uh, some would ask question just a sec this competition as you said i said happened a couple years ago so what's this, what's the value of doing competition which is already finished right and there are some examples uh, comparison i like a b comparison it usually works really well on us humans uh, there are some advantages uh, uh, pros cons for life versus finished competition um, you can take your time basically and do much deeper, uh, you know, more interesting uh, R&D work if you're not, um, you know, under the deadline. Um, of course, uh, there is gain in, in doing it against other, you know, hundreds of other teams worldwide. So I think at some point we're going to do something like that in the very near future. And I know that before uh, our uh, uh, brilliant people tried it and were uh, in a few cases quite successful. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, I'm not sure you can see anything here. We're going to have the same graph presented in much larger uh, font, but um, it's basically, it repeats that this is long default prediction prototype uh, task, and that's what we try to achieve in this um, interesting project with that A plus team I showed you before. Next slide, please. Mm. We had a presentation to our pension client on this one just you know a couple of weeks ago and um, this is areas of what we um, can overview of course we don't have time to do all of it so i'm going to focus on uh, basically um, uh, workflow and pipeline we developed next slide please this is what we did in nice graphical interface and then on the right side which i'm going to show later uh, what we plan to do in the near future uh, let's go to the next slide that's exactly what we've done. So basically we started with uh, um, initial uh, 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 data. We tried to um, do what is standard uh, first step in our MIA da uh, DAMA and actually majority of uh, ML projects is called EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. And, and then uh, we immediately built like an agile way, we immediately built the first baseline model, which showed uh, this area under curve around 0.71, okay, ish. Um, not bad for the first baseline model. Then in parallel, we tried several uh, different approaches. One is feature engineering. Uh, one is, um, which didn't gain a lot. One is um, data imputation. Yeah, that's much, much better. One is data imputation gain a lot um, and uh, um, uh, what did help a lot is that uh, this merging uh, of um, data sets um, helped significantly and then after this merging we did a couple interesting things we did not just standard feature engineering but we did synthetic features uh, produce them and that helped significantly uh, you can see 0.8, uh, and, and that's kind of uh, golden keys to of the top 
of Kaggle competitions. And then in parallel, we did explainable AI uh, with Sherp. And um, we also went to very interesting, you know, kind of exercise of reducing of feature set to something which is explainable and you can interpret with your um, subject matter expert SMEs, which is very important for SMEs, very important for auditing. And in parallel, with regard to feature, uh, synthetic features, we uh, work on optimizing uh, model parameters and uh, also stacking. So basically building an ensemble of uh, um, uh, models. I think we're gonna skip a lot of slides from now on because um, it would be great if we can, somebody tell me how much time do I have? Let's skip next slide. Yeah, the, yeah. the um, we're we're almost at the top of the hour, uh, Gene. Good. But, so uh, let's go. Course, to, yeah, um, that's okay. Yeah, let's go to uh, uh, last minus uh, um, six slide. Can we do that? Last minus six. Like drop everything. Yeah, yeah. I already described it in very few details. Mm -hmm. Stop. Yep. Stop. 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 Let's go back a little bit. A little bit. Uh, a little bit yes yeah so for um so stop that's fantastic that's exactly what it has to be so a couple lessons learned uh, one is importance of combining data using alternative data nothing new here uh, uh very important and this is like obvious it's business 101 but it's very important to leverage expert knowledge and we have a couple fantastic advisors who help us uh, along the way um and uh, um we really appreciate you for, for their help. Another angle which I will have no time to cover is my favorite, one of my favorite in ML is, is called robust models. In addition to optimal or suboptimal models, sometimes you better build robust models which are gonna sustain major, major changes in your data, uh, major of markets. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is technical uh, stack we use in that specific project. Next slide. Mm. These are future steps uh, which we uh, divided into data and algorithmic uh, analysis. Again, if you want, you can get it uh, uh, afterwards. Next slide. This is just one minute. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention to something really new happening, which is marriage of ML development and DevOps, which is called MLOps. And this is very cool. Uh, uh, Mr. is leading this in our uh, shop and it's very interesting development. Next slide. Uh, and these are tools and framework uh, for ML apps we're using uh, nowadays. This is very cool. Next slide, please. Again, if you want to try uh, Miyadama, these are contacts, uh, my partners, uh, Eugenia, Vlad, um, Yuri, Gubin, and Yuri Zaryadov. Um, next slide, please. And I need to, uh, I would love to thank our amazing um, team who is behind this conference, success of this conference. Uh, I couldn't uh, unfortunately name all these names, but if you are uh, within the art, uh, say thanks to them uh, because they did so much to make this uh, event uh, successful. And I hope you enjoy it. And I think this is last slide. Maybe there's another slide. I'm not sure. Can we check? Ah, this is my email address. I think we're done.